I think the wind's blowing high tonight. Is that a wind blowing in? Whoa! Oh, sorry, everyone. The Santa Ana winds blew in and... <laughs> Miss America said that, you know, she got the photographs taken and the wind blew in, and that's how our nipples came out. <laughs> I know. You know what I think we should have at this point in the show? Because we used to have puppets, but uh, they all they all uh, they all went away. <laughs> they're dead. <laughs> they're fine. They're, they're puppets anyway. Why do you always go whenever I say that? They're not even alive. <laughs> all right, they are alive then. They're fine. They've gone to see their grandmother in Pismo Beach. They'll be back <laughs> next week to sing a song. But you know what? If you want to sing a song on TV, you have to give whoever wrote it lots of money. Because um, I wanted the puppets to sing, I'll tell you a secret, I wanted them to sing Oops, I Did It Again by Britney Spears. <laughs> we have to, you'd have to pay for that. <laughs> Do we look like we've got any money here? <laughs> and then I wanted, I wanted the puppets to sing Pretty Vacant by the Sex Pistols. And we got in touch with the Sex Pistols and they said, no. <laughs> I mean, just like that, with an English accent and everything. No. It was even written down on the email. It said, English accent in brackets, and then went, no. <laughs> and it, some other stuff that you can only see on cable. <laughs> this is not over, Sex Pistols. Craig Ferguson. Now, when he comes out, give me thunder! <laughs> I had a very big lunch today. It gave me thunder, I can tell you. <laughs> uh, I meant I farted. No! I hmm? Brisket, I did. Actually, I had brisket for lunch today. Are you turning into Larry King? I might be. <laughs> And he's coming on the show, isn't he? Got, can we have this conversation later? I'm kind of busy. <laughs> Do you believe this? <laughs> it's a great day for America, everybody. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Is it? Yeah. <laughs> no. I tell you what I'm excited about. You know the Superman suit that Superman wore in the movies? It's going out on sale. I'm not going to buy it. I'm not going to bid on it. I spent all my money on Wonder Woman's invisible plane. <laughs> Does that make any sense? Like, her plane's invisible, but she's not? <laughs> so she just turned, look, oh, quick, let's go on with our crime. No, what, look, Wonder Woman's coming. <laughs> I can't see any plane. I didn't say anything about a plane. Just Wonder Woman, she's coming. Aha, here I come. <laughs> Do you know that because of declining readership, this is very sad, Playboy magazine have announced they're cutting costs to save money they're replacing the Playboy bunnies at the mansion with actual bunnies. <laughs> but Hugh Hefner can't tell the difference now anyway. He's like... Oh, they're so cute. I like to cuddle.
Oh, look, this one left me some raisins. Oh, it's lettucey. <laughs> Kidding. Hey, you know what? Cher shocked our uh, Las Vegas audience this week. She wore a see-through bodysuit. Cher! You could see everything but her knees. They were covered up by her boobs. But other than that, <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Cher looks great. Do we have a picture of Cher? There she is. Come on! She's still got it. <laughs> did you see that Miss California press conference this morning? Neither did I, but the good news is... Miss California's topless photos will not cost her her crown. <laughs> the bad news is Miss California had to listen to Donald Trump, who was at the conference. He was talking about her boobies. I'm not, I'm not kidding. Trump said that I've been, I've been reviewing the pictures e extensively. <laughs> he's been reviewing those pictures extensively. If he's reviewing those pictures anymore, he'll be growing a toupee on his palms. I think you know what I'm saying. I don't care who you are, that crap's funny. Anyway, <laughs> during the Miss USA pageant, Miss California was asked a question about gay marriage by Perez Hilton. And today, Trump said that he thought Perez Hilton was engaging in self-promotion. And I'm thinking, this is Trump accusing someone of self-promotion. <laughs> That's like the Octomom saying you've got too many kids. <laughs> Do you know there's still more uh, photographs of, uh, topless photographs of Miss California. They came out today. They're on the TMZ right now. Take a look. There's, there they are there. Look, the, the CBS eye is right on top of them. Uh, <laughs> and what happens is that... Miss California says that these photographs happened by accident because they were taken on a windy day. <laughs> it was the type of windy day that blows open your top and leaves your hair perfectly. This <laughs> wow, yeah. Boy, those Santa Ana winds, I tell you. They, they're coming out of the north. It's happened to me. It's happened to me. The wind blows. They blow my pants clear off. <laughs> Usually when I'm in West Hollywood over there somewhere, anyway. <laughs> anyway, uh, Donald Trump has decided in his magnificence, in his, uh, in his uh, judgment, that Miss California can keep her crown. Yeah. <laughs> Trump would never tell someone to remove a piece of useless rubbish from their head. Why would he? he would... <laughs> I don't... Wait, you know what I don't understand? No, please. Oh. Ooh. Ooh. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't understand. <laughs> I don't know why that makes me laugh so much. What I don't understand is the whole, uh, the whole trouble. Of the, I don't know why topless pictures are controversial. Racy pictures are nothing new in beauty pageant history. You remember Vanessa Williams? You remember that photo spread? I saw those photographs. I was outraged. There was only like, there was only half a dozen of them. I could have taken a whole book of those. They were fantastic. <laughs> And, but she, Vanessa Williams wasn't uh, Miss USA, she was Miss America. And a lot of people ask, what's the difference between uh, Miss USA and Miss America? Uh, well, the Miss USA pageant doesn't have a talent competition, see? And it's owned by Donald Trump. <laughs> Coincidence? <laughs> no, actually, I think the words Trump and talent are about as related as Cheney and rainbows. <laughs> understand what's the big deal about seeing someone's nipples. Everyone's got two nipples, except me, I have three, but only... <laughs> I do. Only two of them are pierced, though. The middle one, the middle one wouldn't sit still for it. It can't be tamed. Be calm. <laughs> be calm, you feisty, magnificent bastard. <laughs> a nipple's not even a reproductive organ. What the hell is everybody getting all upset about nipples for? I remember seeing President Obama's nipple when it was in that mm, the magazine thing. It's not offensive. i tell you what I find offensive. I was on the beach this weekend and it was a fat German dude on and he was wearing Speedo so tight I could see the outline of his schnauzer. That's offensive. 
I mean, I could only see it if I followed him around looking and everything, but... No, it's true. On the beach, I saw this German guy. He was letting it all out. He was like, pass me the sunscreen. My blood whilst is burning. <laughs> I knew he was German because he was walking up and down the beach like this. Uh... Oh, sorry. Too soon. Anyway, the... Uh... The pageant organisers say that Miss, uh, they think that Miss California lied about posing topless. And I'm thinking, so what? Beauty queens are in show business. Show business is about lies. That's what we do. <laughs> lies and jazz hands. That's it. <laughs> By the way, that's the title of my autobiography. Lies and jazz hands. <laughs> Actually, it's not. It's entitled American on Purpose. It's available September 15th from all fine bookstores. You, you could probably pre-order it on Amazon if you had a computer. <laughs> Go and do it, I'll wait. <laughs> All right, well, we'll take a commercial break, but you better have ordered it by the time I get back. All right, we'll be back in a minute. We'll be right back, everybody. Show. Whoa, the winds are blowing tonight. Oh, sorry, everyone. Oh, oh my pants. Oh. <laughs> How sexy was that? <laughs> Looked like a gorilla wearing a suit. <laughs> Which, of course, is sexy. You know what, you know, everybody's giving uh, this, uh, you know, Miss California women a hard time about being against gay marriage. And I'm thinking, well, don't we, uh, we, do, uh, we have free speech in this country. I mean, if Miss uh, California says something that you disagree with, and personally I do, who cares? She's Miss California, for God's sakes! <laughs> She's not an arbiter of social justice. Her main skill is looking good in a bikini. <laughs> Something we have in common. <laughs> Just say it. <sighs> um, do we have time for email? Yeah. <laughs> this tie's too thin. I think we've gone too far with this tie. Look how thin this tie is. It's not even a tie, it's just kind of like a line. It's like somebody just come up to me with a magic marker and went, ah, oh, there's your tie. <laughs> I mean, really, it's ridiculous. I've, I'd lost a, I've lost a bit of weight recently, but people think I'll put it back on because I'll be out, there's so much of me on the, each side of the tie. Does that mean a wider tie makes you look thinner? Get me wider ties! <laughs> Sorry. Uh, and, uh, by the way, uh, as part of our big green drive here, you know, uh, Save the Environment, we print the emails out on paper. <laughs> <laughs> this is from Costa in Vancouver, um, which is in Canada. I know. Um, Costa says, hi, Craig, I'm trying to quit smoking. How do you set your mind to that? It's pretty easy. I, I gave up smoking a, a while ago, 10 years ago, more, actually. Um, what you do is that you, uh, you know that bit where you put them in your mouth and then you, you, know, you light them? Don't do that. <laughs> hey, presto. <laughs> CBS cares. This is from Connor in Calgary in Alberta. This is in Canada as well. I know again. <laughs> Connor says, hi, Craig. Uh, do you watch Gossip Girl at night and eat ice cream? I do. <laughs> and I cry. <laughs> I've never seen Gossip Girl. The kids go nuts for it. It's kind of like the Jonas Brothers of TV, isn't it? They, they're, they're like, people love it. They're, it's all about, you know, what happens in it? People have sex and stuff? <laughs> I've got that in my computer. <laughs> this is uh, from Mahira in Lahore, which is in Pakistan. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's not often we get letters from Lahore. <laughs> 
I'll just read this letter from Lahore. <laughs> anyway, Maria says, hey, Craig, I always love watching your show. Uh, You have a huge fan following here in Pakistan. I've got to say, though, you have to stop confusing our accent with the Indian accent. Seriously. <laughs> right there. I would like to offer my apologies. <laughs> all right, that's all we can take for. We'll be right back with more hijinks. Welcome back to the big show where the wind is blowing so hard and so strong that at any point I could reveal my nipples. <laughs> Do you know, on any given day, all of us, all of us hear mountains of right? Every... <laughs> Everybody does. Every day you hear it from everybody. There's always some crap going on. But when I hear a model say to me, I only showed my nipples because the wind blew and my breasts came out, I say, Madam, you're treating me as if I am a fool. <laughs> That, madam, is not true. <laughs> and I don't care how many fancy Hollywood lawyers you got. <laughs> I'm telling you. <laughs> Do you know what else I've noticed? Do you know the, the networks, the, you know, the television networks, you know, CBS and the other ones? They, uh... <laughs> They, they, they bring, they're bringing back the old series, you know, the Bionic Woman, the Knight Riders, the, the other ones, you know. Uh, they're even bringing back one of my favourite shows, Murder, She Wrote. <laughs> Take a look at this. Tonight's episode, The Cat and the Fiddle, of death. All right, I've got arterial perforation with corresponding abrasions. Cause of death, stapler. <laughs> Hello. Wait, aren't you Detective Stella Bonacera of CSI New York, which is on 10 p.m. Wednesdays on CBS? <laughs> That's me. Yes. <laughs> and aren't you Paul McCartney? No! No, I, I get that all the time. I'm actually Jessica Fletcher, the famous murder and mystery author. I've just uh, finished my latest book. There you are, yeah. Living with genital herpes? Oh, uh, no! No, that's good. Hey! <laughs> <laughs> He's cute. Yeah, yes! It's a shame he's living with genital herpes. <laughs> yeah, no, 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 I, I mean, this, this book I've just written has not been a murder. You know, it is so nice to meet you, but you really have to leave now because this is a crime scene. Crime? <laughs> There are multiple non-self-induced contusions causing terminal expiration. Oh, I see. There's just one thing I don't understand. Has there been a murder? Yes! I just told you that. <sighs> Look, just check out the obtuse lithomas yes. near the 
thoracic artery. Ah, yes, uh, the theorem leads me to one question, of course, which is, has there been a murder? <laughs> has there been a murder? Has there, has there been a murder? Okay, look, 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 look. <laughs> See this, this uh, forensic black light? It will show you the blood spatter oh, patterns. Oh, yes, yes, I see the... See? I can, yes, I can see. I... Okay. I can, so, I, I can see everything, and Mommy like it. Um, now, you know what? Let's analyze the directionality. Yes, yes, may I study the breast thing again? <laughs> yes, yes. This is very interesting. Let me take it all in. Oh, my eyes. Whoa! You could see my underwear. How did you do that? Well, it's easy. What do you do? This and you just click it on. No, no, no. Oh, stop it! You're disgusting. Really? Oh. I got here as soon as I can. I'm the office manager. Yes! And you're also the murderer. Oh. That's ridiculous. He just got here. Oh, is it? Is it? Yeah. Well, let's just look at the clues. There's a stapler, there's the Garfield mug. I peed myself a little bit. <laughs> it all somehow fits together. No, it doesn't. Yeah. That's stupid. But you did pee yourself, which is really good. Mm -hmm. But we need more proof. Well, how about this? <laughs> oh. You got me, Fletcher. I killed him. Damn, you're good. And, and, and also, I probably shouldn't have worn this shirt today. Uh, I'm just going to go have myself arrested. Oh, good. That's how it's done, you see? That... Uh, wait, may just turn this off? No, that's great work, Fletcher. I mean, seriously. I... I, how, how, how come I can't see your underwear? Oh, I always go commando. <laughs> Commando. Commando, yes, my ladies like to breathe. <laughs> that sounds kind of sexy. Oh, you said it, sister. I, I, and I like a lady cop who knows the difference between right and thong. <laughs> <laughs> I know you're tired of it, but that's all I have in my life is this right now, and a lot of other things, but... That's quality entertainment right there, I... I tell you, that's bringing back the magic days of television. You know, when people used to have black and white photographs coming in going, ooh, that was all the rage back when then. Anyway, my... <laughs> My first guest tonight is a supermodel and an author. There's a phrase you don't hear often. And <laughs> she's the star of the America's to uh, Next Top Model with a season finale. It airs uh, Wednesday night on the CW. Please welcome the lovely Polina Porotskova, everybody. Polina Porotskova. Hello. Hello. Oh, thank you. How are you, Pauline? Oh, uh, well, I am. I am very well indeed. I've had a lovely day. Yeah, you look healthy. Yes, and I wanted to congrat. <laughs> it's makeup. Oh. I wanted to congratulate you on finding a non-bitter woman. To oh, marry. you mean because I got married, and, and the last time you were here, I said you said to me, well, "Am I looking for a woman?" And I said, "Someone who isn't bitter." Yeah, you yeah, remember. Yeah. yeah. I, I'm, I'm very happy that, no, that I, it was memorable I, enough. I, it was yes, good. I wouldn't forget. Excuse me a second. I just noticed my shoelace is untied. Do you mind if I tie it? <laughs> I think the wind must have blown and untied my shoelace. <laughs> now, listen, you were a model for a long time, right? Did the wind ever blow and reveal your breasts when you didn't want them revealed? Oh, my God, yes, like every day. Really? Yes. Well, you're European, but yeah, you don't European. mind. Yes, you European. Our don't mind tops it. blow off all the time. Tarky, you can't... The winds in Europe are so strong, yes. most people are naked the year round. In Sweden, they are... They are, it's windy. It's and very windy in Sweden. And you know, we're used to it. And when our clothes blow off, we don't think anything of it. Yes, I, well, but you're not Swedish or Czechoslovakian. No, actually, I have a Swedish passport. Really? As well as an American passport. Are you a spy? 
You would make a good spy. I would, wouldn't yes, I? Yes, you would, yeah, actually. But I wouldn't want to die at the end of the movie. Well, I, okay, you don't have to. Yeah, well, no, well, you're usually... You're a very pessimistic no, you, you, person, well, well, I'm because I'm Czech. That's my... That's my oh, well, you know, that's, that's, that's Yeah, it's yeah. A, it, you know, we, we all f are very pessimistic about life in general. Yeah. And when somebody hurts you, uh, if you're Czech, you throw yourself out the window. That's how you protest things in Czechoslovakia. Yeah, that's yeah. why they never won a war. No, 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 you, you want to... Let's, let's... Well, let's begin the rehabilitation now. Uh, what you want to do if when someone hurts you is, uh, you know, you go like this. Ooh. 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 Yeah. Do, do you enjoy Salvador Dali? Love Dali. Do Love really? Dali. Yeah, he was a really interesting man. Very interesting. And his Very strange. wife was an interesting Gala. person. Gala. Yeah, was it yes. Gala, her name? I think so. I, you know what? I'm not, um, you know. Yeah, don't, right. Yeah. I'm yeah. not going to swear on that one, but I just, I, I know the relationship was really interesting between the two of them. Although, as far as painters go, I'm really kind of a Picasso girl. I like a bit of Picasso. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah I, I would like to Nothing I like one. better than an eye here and then one over here. I'm like... <laughs> That's, that's entertainment right there. That's the art world's version of jazz hands, right there. <laughs> Tell me about the America's Next Top Model. How are you doing working with Tyra? She can be a barrel of laughs. Yes, I, I, I am sure she can uh, be. Wow! <laughs> oh, hang on, let me listen, see if I've got listen, any milk in uh, here. Uh, there, help uh, yourself. Listen, you know, do you know why I'm in Los Angeles, besides seeing you? Yeah, why? As, as lovely and charming as it is, because I'm looking for a job. Because I was fired by America's Next Top Model no on my way. birthday. Wow, well, yes. welcome to the show. did well. Jeez. So, do you have a job? Sure, yeah, you can do the ooh thing here if you want, or something. Uh, ooh. Oh, there, it works. Ooh. Yeah. Um, well, th who fired you, and for what? Well, the way it was put to me... That's a large cup. The way it was... Yeah. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Your chair is higher than mine. Yeah, but I need a big cup, too. I know. Um... There's still people here, you know. But it's so easy to forget. Yeah, yeah, it's all right. That's enough of uh, that. Anyway, now, who fired you from uh, the... Uh... Oh, wait, 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 wait. No, uh, well, okay, no. No, you, not who fired me. That's Im That doesn't matter. Somebody fired me. Oh, yeah, who? Uh, well, when you were... Let, just give us a clue. When you were fired, did anyone do this? <laughs> did they say, you are fired, like that? Hard to see over the phone. Oh, oh, the phone. Yes, oh. uh, uh, but the, the, the reason I was fired, just to be fair here, the reason right. I was told I was fired was because... Um, it, it seemed that America's top model had gotten too fat and they needed to cut some fat and the fat was me. Um, you know. You're, you're skid and bone, woman. There's hardly anything to you. It's not that I was too fat. I oh, was I see. the fat. Oh, I see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. The you metaphorical know. fat. Yes. Right. You mean you got it now? Yes, absolutely. Okay. All right. Sorry, Great. I wasn't concentrating. No. <laughs> There's still people here, you know. There's still people here. <laughs> So, uh, so, so, um, so, so I figured it was either that, you know, uh, it was, I think that was a nice way of putting it. And I could have been either that or my gigantic, huge ego. Which I wasn't aware of before I was told by the producers that I had an I ego think problem. Of, I don't think of you as having an ego problem. I didn't either, but you know, Tyra. Oh, I see what this is. What? <laughs> because I, I, do, I don't. I see what? what it is. What? It's rivalry, isn't it? It's you and Tyra. Well, I was working for her, so it's not quite rivalry. Well, yeah. It's not fair yeah. if you're working. I mean, it's, you know, the, the people that work for you can't... You I know, fire them all the time. They get too pretty. I fire them. <laughs> the minute they walk out, you look out. You're starting to look pretty good. He, they, they walk in here. If, if they outside me, they're gone. Well, you're funny. Out. It's true. They're all... I get them You're out. funny, good-looking, and you wrote a book. Yes, out you go. Yeah. Is, is, is that what I actually think? No, 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 absolutely not. I really believe that they just felt like they didn't need me, which, of course, they don't. So that's okay, but, you know... Um, uh, so you're looking for a job here in, I'm in L.A.? looking for a job. What kind of thing you're looking for, then? Uh, uh, well, I, I, I wouldn't mind doing Starbucks if, if it wasn't sort of humiliating. No, know? no! It's like, not... I mean, no, it's not humiliating to work at Starbucks, but, you know, to be as, like, wait, aren't you the model at them working at Starbucks? That's... They have good, they have really good... Not uh, if you're actually the one doing the, the espresso drinks. That's the, that's the big job. You know, if you get the actual... Yeah, if you get the psh, psh, psh machine... That's, yeah, that's, that's, that's okay. the equivalent to having your own sitcom. So, you know, 
I, I'm not. I'm not sure if I can. Um, I've never auditioned for a job like that. I don't quite know what to do. But to be a Could barista? You? Yeah. Yeah, you'll be fine. No, no. But what do I do? I don't know. I'll open a Starbucks. I'll give you the job. There you are. Right? <laughs> You hear me, Starbucks? And you know what else I'll do? I'll reinstitute the uh, zucchini walnut muffin that they got rid of in Starbucks, those bastards. You heard me. Very, very, very impolite of them. Isn't yeah, it? I know. The zucchini walnut muffin was their, uh, for me, their signature item. You know. But apparently, it was taking up space that could otherwise be used for jazz CDs. What, what, what's, what's with those jazz CDs? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Well, yeah, I, would, I, I feel a little left out. Because I, I don't understand. You, you don't understand jazz? I don't understand why it's funny. What, jazz CDs? Uh-huh. They're, they're not funny. They're not funny. Well, mo most of them aren't. No, I, I haven't heard all of them. I'm sure there's some hilarious jazz out there. <laughs> dude, 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 dude. Boing. There, that. That'll probably be the, the funny jazz. We're completely out of time. Oh, well, there you go. Well, you, you've probably got some time because you don't have a job. I, but I, 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 on the other hand... I'll just stick around here and mop the floor. All right, no, we, we'll, we'll, we'll figure out something. Belina <laughs> Post, go to everybody. We'll be right back. Surprised? <laughs> I was too, because my, 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 my next guest is a businessman and author. He's written a new book called POW! <laughs> right, this is good, actually. This is good practice for when I get fired from here and have to do the infomercial. <laughs> POW! <laughs> right between the eyes. Hey, not once, not twice, but three times. You get the sham. Wow, clean it right up. Clean it right up. <laughs> POW! <laughs> My next guest wrote this book. He's very clever. Uh, the book's in stores now. Please welcome Andy Nolman, everybody. Andy Nolman. <laughs> welcome, Andy. What the hell are you doing taking your jacket off with your T-shirt and everything going on? What's happening? The, the studio's warm, and I figured it's a, uh, I've already got my pow in with you. I didn't need pow. another jacket. Wow. Pow. All right, I, I'm going to do it again to allow the cameraman to get it. Pow! Because it's so difficult. Um, <laughs> how are you, Andy? Good to see you. Same here, Craig. What a pleasure. Andy, what you probably don't know is that Andy and I have known each other for how long? 20 years. 20 well, I've been, I've, I've been sober for 17 years, so we've known each other really 17 years. You've known me 20 <laughs> years. I've known you 17 years. You're a, Wonderful guy, even when you were, um, let's say, was not I was, sober. Was I really? Pudgy. Was, very pudgy. But I, was pudgy. A lot, I was a lot heavier then. Yeah, I was, heavier, uh, was I nicer then? You were scary. I still remember the first time I saw you in Edinburgh, Scotland. Yeah. And I was really scared because you came out, your hair was spiky, you had these big glasses on, this jacket that was ill-fitting. Yeah. And you were telling the audience to shut up and go to hell. And I'm saying, That's why oh, I do that now. <laughs> That's my whole act. And I was really actually quite intimidated, but your manager, I remember at the time, Rachel Swan, this teeny weeny little, little woman. Yeah, she was a little English girl, wasn't she? Hello, and she little said, Rachel. Hello, hello. hello she dear. Said, she was trying to get me to book you for the just for the last Montreal festival. Comedy Festival, which and you were the promoter of. Yeah. She said, He's really a pussycat, you know. So I said, All right, and you were, you most definitely were. So That's, I have no <laughs> recollection, but good on you anyway. <laughs> you were like you were you meowed, you licked from a, a little dish, milk from a dish, you were incredible. <laughs> Amazing, amazing, uh, amazing time. <laughs> uh, yeah. uh, let me just stress that Andy was a promoter at the Montreal Comedy Festival and not actually, you know, performing. I think that's important you should know that. <laughs> Thank you for clarifying. Yeah, no, it's all right. Hey, because you, Andy was the first guy that ever hired me to work in, in well, it's not America, it's Canada, but it was close. It's it was close. closer. You got, was it, <laughs> you got on American television that and I, and I, Yeah, I did get on. Oh, that's right, you were the first person who got me on American television. Right. So if you hate me, it's his fault, not me. <laughs> Yeah, now, the, what's the book about then, Andy? Power right between the eyes. Because I, I wanted to read it, but I want to, you know, keep the surprise. <laughs> the, the, the book is really about standing out, making a difference. And basically, it's a, a, a manifesto, a call to arms about doing things differently, standing out, um, standing out from the crowd and uh, getting people to notice you. Yeah, uh, and you do this with clothing? I do, <laughs> yes. <laughs> 
<laughs> no, I see, I, I've, had, I've known Andy for a long time. I'm always surprised by what you wear. That, I always go, pow, yeah, right see? between the eyes. When... <laughs> see, not all of us, Craig, are strapping, you know, uh, Scottish, good-looking guys who can get, you know, get attention that way. Some of us have to do things a little bit differently with our clothes and with our flies that are undone. Thank you. Are they undone? Yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Totally yeah. unintentional, totally. Yeah. You know, wow. I said to myself, I, I said, I have to have a last minute pee. Should I do it or should I go with a little bit of stress on, on the show? And I said, no, no, I will go de-stress myself and I forgot to close my zipper. See this here? <laughs> this picture of you, this is you breaking out of uh, you. That's right. Andy, are you from another planet? <laughs> Have you taken over my friend Andy's body? You're dressing him in some outlandish fashion. I'll tell you, well, th that picture was very, very important because most author pictures are so dull. I mean, you see the guy sitting there like this, propping up their heads, or trying to look very serious, looking off into the distance like this, or with a pipe. So what yeah. I tried to do, if the book you, was about... That would have been a surprise to see you with a pipe. That's for sure. <laughs> that didn't have crack in it. Um... <laughs> What, what, what? Hey, you know who wrote the uh, foreword to this book? One of them was written by, I wrote one of them. That's right. Which is a surprise to me. Yes. Uh, <laughs> now, I don't write forewords to books, and I'll tell you why. Because nobody's ever asked me. <laughs> but you asked me, so I did. And then John Cleese. Ah. John Cleese wrote a, a foreword. Look, there he is there. You can't see his hairy back, but he's there. And he says uh, in this book, buy this book or you will die. <laughs> is that true? Yes. 100%. No, stop. 100%. 100%. So please, if it's not on the bestseller list tomorrow, we're going to have massive death all across the country. <laughs> You've been warned. You've been warned. I think you may get a surprise if we don't <laughs> cut that out. No, I... <laughs> I, uh, I, are you still involved at the Montreal Comedy Festival? Yes, I oh, still really? direct the gals. Was, we did a couple oh, of years. Oh, well, yes. I thought you were just doing that because I was there. I thought uh, it was just being a friend. It was being a great friend. And actually, people don't know this, but you are a, a, quite the song and dance man. Very, yeah, I did, Somewhat yeah. queeny in many, uh, many ways, but uh, we'll just get into that. <laughs> you are very much a, a very big song and I dance got, man. I got show business in my blood. You give me <laughs> 10 seconds, I'll give you jazz hands. I'm and telling you, you man. You I'm all over it. But I still direct the gallows. I'll be actually working with John Cleese this summer, with the consummate pro. I mean, it's unbelievable working with that man. And uh, I actually I speak to him every week, and uh, we're preparing now for uh, the shows in July. The shows in July in Montreal. And are you, are you going to do any, is it Pythons, or is it just John on his it's own? It's just is John it? on his own, and uh, we are taking, actually, we're working on uh, a whole show based on his, his divorce. And, uh, oh, that's it's, it's a smart thing to nasty do. Nasty as all hell. <laughs> Nas nasty as all hell. What about Montreal? That's a fantastic city, isn't it? A lot of fun. Do you right. live there the, the whole year All round? year round. All and do year you, round. you're Canadian, so do you enjoy uh, bacon? The, no, but uh, <laughs> other stereotypes like hockey. Hockey, you do uh, the yes, hockey. Now, yes. see, I've always thought this about Canadians. Canadians, much like yourself, right? Lovely, polite people. They like the books, you know, surprise, all yeah. those <laughs> literate people. You enjoy gregarious people. You put a hockey stick in their hand, they turn into Vikings. That's astonishing. <laughs> But I, I'm worse because I'm like more of a masochist. I play goalie, so I let the Vikings come in and basically uh, Beat fire you up. on me. Yeah, basically. Yeah, that's in essence. Uh... I can, you, it's know, a, that. you know, it's, it's very, it's a very Jewish thing. I don't know. I think it's um, most Jews who ever played in the NHL. Are you goalies. Jewish and Canadian? Yes, of course. Oh, congratulations. Thank you, Carson. <laughs> so, <laughs> it's a very masochistic thing. So, uh, but I, I dig it. I dig hockey a lot. In fact, uh, tonight would have been my hockey night. So uh, I'm spending it here with you instead of being well, on the ice. Well, that's uh, it's a great surprise that you missed it. It's very lovely to see Andy Norman, Thank everybody. You, we were all back. Meow. Let us see.